Hello, so we're continuing a review of sequences. I'm going to look more closely at the descending second pattern. So I've already laid out here the basic uh, chords on the first beat of each of the descending second pattern, so 1, 7, 6 to 5. To write this correctly, we have to put in a chord in between to break out the parallels, and that is a descending fifth. We'll just do them in root position here at the beginning. So 1 to 4. 7 to 6, 7 to 3, to 6, to 2, to 5, and finish the whole thing up right there with the 1. So that's 4, 7 to 3, 6 to 2, and in this case, in the minor, the 2 is the diminished triad, and yet still you can write this progression in root position. The weakness of the 2 chord is mitigated by the sequential pattern. So, what do the other voices do? Well, if it's just a plain triad and not a 7th chord, then the 3rd and the soprano May moves up to Fa to double the bass. Likewise, in the subsequent voices, just moves up in that. And the, and the major is the melodic outline to bingo, which we talked about in class. Alto voice, the doubled root in the one chord is the fifth of the four chord, so it doesn't need to change at all. The tenor voice, the fifth. Uh, the one chord goes up and, play, and does the third of the four, and we can continue on. So let's hear this, just plain uh, triads, descending fifth progression. wrong with that. There's no leading tone. Okay, there we go. Let's listen to it again. Now, this, uh, you can have a smoother bass, as we've seen, by having a first inversion, every other chord in first inversion. Same basic progression. And then what the other voices do, frankly, they can stay the same because all you're doing is doubling the bass each time. We can also do, um, you can have an even smoother tenor line and come down and double the soprano. And then you get to just hold steady and anticipate the next chord. So that's probably even smoother. That is definitely even smoother. So let's listen to that. And there are other um, versions you can do of this. Let's now just look at the possibility of having seventh chords now, a series of seventh chords. So I'm going to go, well, let's just leave here, the, the, the four, six chord. So let's leave the soprano holding steady on the May, which now becomes the seventh of the four chord. Now that's a four, six, five. So then the seventh of the four, six, five is prepared as May in the one chord, and it resolves down. So this is an ideal um, sequential pattern to add sevenths to because they're always moving down a second. So that works every single time. So, three, six, five. So when you do these, um, you can have every chord be a seventh, or you can have every other chord be um, a seventh chord. Uh, there's lots of variations of the descending fifth pattern. It's very malleable. That's why composers like it so much.
And very, very quickly, I'm going to just show how you can have the descending fifth pattern with in root position with all seventh chords. So I'm just going to put seven on each one. I don't know if I'll take time and write. Okay, so we start with the one. Actually, I'm not going to put a seventh on the one. We have the um, the four is seventh, but we need the third. You can omit. In fact, you will have to omit the fifth of every other seventh chord, but you can't omit thirds. So this four seven chord, as you see, is complete. Fa, le, do, and me. So the seven seven that follows it cannot be complete. So the seventh is prepared as the third of the four ties over is the seventh of the seven. I have a third and a doubled root. No fifth. Seventh here resolves down to the third of this chord. We have a fifth and the seventh in the soprano. Seventh resolves down. So I think everything is we have to do is just change the tenor voice. Seventh resolving down to the third. Tied over to the seventh, resolving down to the third. Tied over to the seventh, resolving down to the third. It's the same thing in the soprano. It's the seventh and the four, resolving down to the third of the seven seven. Tied over to the seventh of the three, resolving down to the third of the six. Tied over is the seventh of the two, resolving down to the third of the five. And here I'll fix all of these, and then we'll listen to it. A progression worth really studying the voice leading is a good summary of all the past month's work we've done. Okay, thank you.